Have you ever danced against your will? If you've ever been to a rave or some outdoors festival, you already know how fun it is and how great it feels to be dancing under the stars while your favourite band is playing. But imagine that there's no music and you're not willingly dancing, but rather something inside of you makes you move for days on end. No, we're not talking about drugs here and we're definitely not encouraging you to try them. We're talking about the dancing plague. Hello, and welcome to Curiosity Factor. Today, we're discussing a different type of illness, one that does not keep you confined to your bed, but rather gives you the jitterbug. 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 Something really strange happened in July 1518 to the residents of the city of Strasbourg. People were struck by this sudden and uncontrollable urge to dance, and they did. The whole hysteria, which nowadays is known as the Dancing Plague, started off when one woman, known as Frau Trofea, stepped into the streets and began to silently twist, twirl and shake. Frau Trofea had a dance -a all by herself for almost a week, up until about three dozen other Strasbourg residents joined in. Surprisingly, Frau Trofea had even collapsed from exhaustion at some point, but after resting for a while, she resumed her dancing. By August, there were over 400 victims dancing around the city. With no explanation for this strange phenomenon, the local physicians blamed this dancing on hot blood and suggested that the ones affected will simply work out the fever eventually. Surprisingly, the city went on with that idea and even decided to facilitate the feverish ones by constructing a stage and bringing in professional dancers. Yeah, and the town even hired a band to provide these poor fellows with some music since they've been twirling around for some time in complete silence. But with all the things provided to somewhat ease the people's torment, soon enough, the dancing marathon would start to take its toll. Many of the dancers collapsed from exhaustion, while some even died from strokes and heart attacks. This dancing plague eventually started dying off in September, when the dancers were whisked away to a mountaintop shrine to pray for absolution. But this strange phenomenon in Strasbourg is not the only incident of its kind. Yes, it may sound like the stuff of myths and legends, but the 1518 Dancing Plague is well documented in historical records. Similar manias also took place in Switzerland, Germany and Holland, although few of them were as large or as deadly as the Strasbourg one. But one question plagues us nowadays. What could have compelled people to dance themselves to death? There have been several explanations given, some saying that it was overheated blood or demonic possession. Historians also believe that the explanation most likely concerns Saint Vitus, a Catholic saint who 16th century Europeans believed had the power to curse people with a dancing plague. When combined with the horrors of disease and famine, both of which were tearing through Strasbourg in 1518, the Saint Vitus superstition may have triggered a stress-induced hysteria that took hold of much of the city. Others have suggested that the dancers were merely members of some weird religious cult, as they have been known to act out well-organised dancers, despite them being banned at the time. So by disguising them as uncontrollable dancing mania, these cults could go on and perform their rituals. Investigators in the 20th century came up with another likely cause for this dancing plague. They suggested that the people affected by the illness might have consumed bread made from rye flour that was contaminated with a fungal disease called ergo. This toxic mould usually grows on damp rye and is known to produce spasms and hallucinations. However, ergo does not really cover all the symptoms that dancers had during the plague. While the true case of the dancing mania is not known, it is certain that many participants were psychologically disturbed. But there is also the small chance that some of them may have taken part in all the dancing out of fear, or simply wished to be part of the in crowd. There are many theories surrounding the dancing plague of 1518, but which one do you think is the most plausible explanation for it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you want to learn more interesting facts, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again in our next video.